Hi, it's Tim Hagen from Progress Coaching, and welcome to another episode of Coaching Conversations. And I wanted to make you aware of something very cool that we're doing on a subscription basis, and we'll put a link in each one of our episodes. But every Wednesday, we're going to be doing what we call an audio podcast workshop. That workshop will be roughly about 14 to maybe 20 minutes per episode with each month having the theme from a coaching model, using feedback strategically to coaching self-awareness and so on. So if you could look in the body or in the content description of each episode, and you will see a link where you can join this subscription. These are literally four workshops every month teaching specific strategies to address a particular area of workplace coaching uh, as it relates, again, to things like awareness, motivation, teamwork, and what have you. Here's the cool thing. It's only $10 per month, and each month you will get a handout that we will follow along with, so we also give you a tool for you to take notes as we go through each episode. We hope you'll check it out. This is going to be an extremely edgy, edgy podcast, and the title of it is we've stopped listening to each other. Let me give you a case in point. And I share this with great humility, sensitivity, and I would even say a little bit of anxious fear of how I'll potentially be perceived. And I was on Facebook and I could see the posts between people flying back and forth about the riots and the protests. And I thought, do I even touch this? Am I crossing the line? And I was very inhibited to do so. And then on Friday, I got two calls from clients about conflicts between people. And both sets of conflicts had people not going to the source, not talking. They were sending emails around the people they should be talking to. We need to get back to something very fundamental. And that's talking to each other. As dumb as that sounds, just talking to each other. So going back to the Facebook perspective, I could see people one-upping each other. Yeah, but. And then this cop did this. Yeah, but. And people weren't listening. We were more interested in superseding what someone else said, meaning we stopped listening to each other. And I sent somebody a private Facebook message. And I have a friend who's in the training business and his wife, who has a regular heartbeat, could not get through a peaceful protest. And I sent a message. I did not post it publicly. And I said, my concern is, you know, people are going to be put at great risk with these protests. I'm not against the protest. I I get why you and your family are protesting. I've known this person for a long time. And the scathing response I got back was unbelievable sarcastic, rude, mean, never once argued the protest. And what I got back was, you don't care about, and the person filled in the blank. Notice I'm talking in code. And I thought, wait a minute, I never even came close to saying that, and it taught me something. I should have called her. I should have called her. So I ended up having a conversation, and I said, I want to share with you calmly what I was sharing. What I was sharing had nothing to do with the political views of the protest. What I was sharing was the protests do factually create a health risk. My friend's wife almost could not get to the hospital in time because what they do is they hook her up to some machines and they get her heart steady and that's pretty routine. But he said, Tim, I was getting really anxious. And as the person I was listening to, I could start to hear the yeah, but. Yeah, but. I said, well, no, just let me finish. And then I I, I want to give you a chance. And the person, after I got done, went into huge, huge political views. And I said, I just have to share this with you. My friend's wife is African American. And there was dead silence. Now, personally, I don't think that should have changed anything. And I said, look, the reason I didn't bring that up is because I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is my friend's wife was <laughs> having a health concern. She couldn't get through a protest. That's it. And she said, oh, I didn't. Wow. Yeah. And I said, look, let's calmly discuss this. And by the end of the conversation, we had come to a consensus. We are actually pretty much in agreement with each other on some views. Some views we may have differed a little bit, but that's not what's important. The important thing is we listen to each other. 
Then I had a situation on Friday with a client who literally had a conversation with somebody and the VP of HR took a conversation about a person's boss. And I'm on the phone with the HR person and I said, so what was your objective? And she said, what do you mean? I said, what was your objective? Well, I wanted to listen to the person, blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, you've done that. Can I tell you what you may have accomplished? She said, sure. I said, you have created a revolving door. Had the person who came to you, had they gone to their boss? She said, no. She said she felt uncomfortable. I said, okay, great. So what's going to happen now? She said, well, I haven't talked to the boss yet. I said, it doesn't matter. What's going to happen now? I said, I can tell you what he or she is going to feel. Are they going to focus on the issue or why that person didn't come to them directly? And I'll never forget this because the HR manager said, yeah, but Tim, the person didn't feel comfortable. I said, why? And the HR manager said, that leader has to make sure that people feel invited and that there's engagement and that there's trust. I said, but how do you know that's not there if the employee never tried? And all of a sudden, the HR manager goes, oh, my gosh. I said, so you now you know what's going to happen, right? If that manager pulls back from his or her style, that employee has gained power. That employee is now going to tell other employees. I guarantee you that employee has already told other employees that they came to you. The two parties should have sat down and talked. And so it goes back to we need to talk to each other. And so with all the, the racial divide and all the political divide, we don't talk to each other. And we label each other. We've stopped listening to each other. And I'll share this with you. I am politically to the right. I am more of a Republican. And I remember a conversation with somebody who was really, literally chastising me and used the phrase, you're a Trump lover. Never voted for Donald Trump. Do not love Donald Trump. But because I said I agreed with some of his policies, not all of them, some of them, I did not vote for President Obama. Do I agree with some of the things he did? Absolutely. He did some amazing things. Never voted for him. And so what we do is we, we label and we generalize. And what we do is we cut each other off from conversations. We have to get back to talking to each other. And companies have to get back to positioning leaders to do a couple things. One, visibility chats. Bring them in. Just listen. What's going on that you need to educate me on the front lines? Be my coach. Teach peers how to give each other feedback and accept it professionally and thoughtfully. And teach employees how to coach upward. Having safe conversations, but have policies and rules in place that protect those people. Because I guarantee you, you have people inside your organization who have an absolute fear. Absolute fear going above their head and talking directly to their boss. Because they feel like it's going to come back and bite them. How do I know that? They all say it to me. So we have to get back to talking, listening, paraphrasing back to somebody what they meant, appreciating their views. Yet when we're in disagreement, emotions come out. So when I had sent that private message to that friend on Facebook, I should have picked up the phone. That was my mistake. And it was interesting how text is taken out of context. It's interesting that I do think she was emotionally listening and she was frustrated and the issue was at the front and center of her mind. Listening to me was not, might not have been the right time or place to even have an exchange or a conversation. So we have to be thoughtful. We have to practice it. We have to be empathetic. We have to be in the mode of really understanding other people's views, but not starting the conversation to win them over, to change their view. I go back to one simple concept. When we're having a conversation, ask people, what's your objective? What's your objective in this conversation? If somebody leads off with, well, I'm just frustrated, and they start talking about their feelings, there's nothing wrong with those feelings, but it does indicate they lack an objective for the conversation. 
Because a lot of the time, I think people are looking for the argument. They're looking to persuade you. I think we're all guilty of that. I know I am. So let's get back to talking, listening, actively listening, appreciating, and not judging. Thank you for listening to another episode of Coaching Conversations by Tim Hagen and Progress Coaching. Now, our company is always coming out with new and innovative solutions to help leaders coach their employees. And recently, we just created a new service called Coach to You, where leaders can pick and choose topics and assign 7 to 21 day programs for employees to learn and, more importantly, apply actions and then reflect and share what they're going to do going forward as a result of the learning. It's called Coach to You. We're literally bringing coaching to your employees. If you're intrigued, we'll have a link in each one of our episodes where you can get more information. And again, thank you so much for listening to another episode.